One of the sure signs of spring is the wrap up of the global auto show season. And this year is no exception with the grand finale, the New York International Auto Show. Things are looking rather rosy for Korea's Hyundai brand. Its Genesis sedan was named the 2009 North American Car of the Year. Low speed rear end collisions are all too common, yielding surprisingly high repair bills and insurance claims. So leave it to the safety experts at Volvo to come up with a targeted solution. Two subcompact cars. One a strong seller in Europe, the other dubbed the world's cheapest car, are generating quite a buzz in the American automotive industry. Ford's Sync infotainment system has been garnering praise since its introduction in 2007. And now a new study shows the hands-free system plays a major role in keeping drivers safe on the road. And this year it looks like the domestics are giving the imports a run for their money. And that's the latest for this week's Motor News. I'm Yolanda Vasquez, and this week we're at Virginia International Raceway, where we'll show you the coolest camp on wheels. Usage-based insurance, such as Progressive's MyRate program, offers motorists a customized rate based on a wide variety of factors. How they drive, how much they drive, and when they drive. Since most people have never been this close to a Lamborghini Gallardo, much less driven one, Gotham Dream Cars offers a full tutorial so that anyone who rents this sporty ride knows how to drive it. The Hall of Fame has been giving out this Crystal Pylon Award for the past 30 years. To date, there are over 220 names listed on their registry. While these signatures will forever be etched in history, the museum is already preparing for the future by setting aside these vacant marble slabs for the next generation of pioneers. The second half of the day is by far the most exciting. This is when everyone gets dedicated track time. It's set up in a lead and follow sequence. You have an experienced driver in front. That's Dag in the red Ferrari. And then I simply follow. All right, let's go. A global economy in meltdown has automakers feeling some unseasonal heat these days. But in Detroit, Michigan, and Seoul, South Korea, the news isn't all bad. Beleaguered General Motors has won the overall manufacturer category of R.L. Polk & Company's 2008 Model Year Automotive Loyalty Awards. GM edged out rivals Honda and Toyota with a 62.5% customer loyalty rating. GM is no stranger to this prestigious automotive honor, having taken home the top trophy for the past nine years. President Stephen Polk explains how the loyalty award is determined. We're looking across nine and a half million retail purchases last year and taking a look to see how many of those people had owned cars formerly and had come back to market and really tracking whether their loyalty was to stay within a manufacturer, within a make or within a specific model or whether they, in fact they were defectors. Things are looking rather rosy for Korea's Hyundai brand. Its Genesis sedan was named the 2009 North American Car of the Year. Couple that with the company's innovative assurance program and you have a marketing blitz that's bringing in buyers who never considered the brand before. The insight behind the Hyundai assurance program really came from talking to customers and small groups and, and they gave us the sense that, look, the issue isn't the pricing, it's great, the cars are great. We're all worried about losing our jobs, don't you understand? Um, so we put a program together that addressed that root cause directly. Hyundai says so far at least two customers have had to take advantage of the assurance program's protection plan due to a job loss. And it's safe to say that when times are better, they'll be back to buy another Hyundai. And that's the latest for this week's Motor News. Two subcompact cars, one a strong seller in Europe, the other dubbed the world's cheapest car, are generating quite a buzz in the American automotive industry. The first batch of European-built Ford Fiestas arrived in the U.S. recently. But instead of heading to showrooms, they'll make their way into the hands of web-savvy consumers. Ford executives were on hand at the Port of Baltimore to promote the smart-looking super mini car. The Fiesta is a huge hit overseas, and Ford hopes to generate the same success here with an innovative marketing program called the Fiesta Movement. Ford will loan the vehicle to 100 drivers, or agents as they call them, for six months. They'll go on monthly missions and share their driving experiences online through social networking sites such as Facebook, YouTube, Flickr, and Twitter. Ford says more than 3,000 people applied for the program. While Ford plans to use social networking sites to sell its cars, Tata, the Indian company that now owns Jaguar and Land Rover, has an even simpler method to advertise its new vehicle, a very low price. 
The 2010 Tata Nano was engineered with affordability as its goal. In showrooms across India now, the base price is the equivalent of about 2,500 US dollars. For most Indian families who previously could only afford mopeds, this ultra-cheap 35-horsepower, four-passenger, snub-nosed car is a dream come true. Tata has not said how many orders have been placed for the Nano, but their website has received close to 20 million hits. So whether it's thousands of Nanos negotiating a clogged New Delhi thoroughfare or a Ford Fiesta driving in D.C., it's safe to say small is big again. And that's the latest for this week's Motor News. At first glance, Automotive High School in Brooklyn, New York looks and sounds... Sophomore classes will be performing three modern versions of the ancient Greek play Antigone... ...like any other high school in the country. But a few telltale signs, like this shiny Toyota engine in the lobby and the constant crank of a ratchet... ...lets you know this school specializes in all things automotive. Here, a child might start his or her day with a class like brake steering and suspension, and then two periods later be in a Shakespeare class. Automotive High combines the best vocational training in the industry with an academically rigorous program. Principal Melissa Silverman says students choose to attend her school, hoping to get a job once they graduate. Recent statistics are showing that the baby boomer auto technicians are retiring. In the next five years, they expect to have a need for 25,000 auto technicians. In Mr. Casino's auto shop, these upperclassmen use state-of-the-art diagnostic tools to troubleshoot problems on vehicles both old and new. One of their biggest challenges this semester is an engine swap from a Mercedes ML to a C-Class. Watch your hands. For many students, getting up close and personal with these machines is a dream come true. It's an excellent feeling, especially when you work, especially when you got your hands on something that you really like doing. You know, you just want to go ahead and keep going at it. Lessons learned in this class are carried over to the live shop class run by Carlos Caraballo. The first two years, okay, the kids have broken bolts, they've made mistakes, and when they get down here, the first day, I have to explain to them that. We can't have that down here. Live Shop operates just like a normal repair shop with friends and family members bringing in their vehicles for service. The students do wheel alignments, tune-ups, brake jobs, even state inspections. Caraballo thoroughly reviews the students' work, stressing the consequences of a faulty repair. These are people's lives, you know, that they depend on their vehicle, you know, and the last thing we need is for somebody to be driving down the road and the tire falls off. I feel the trade aspect is definitely very helpful because now if I don't go into the secondary school, I do have something that will help me out in life. Senior Juan Gonzalez speaks with confidence as he looks forward to life after Automotive High. In five years, I hope to be working for a major manufacturing company, designing components for the vehicle. That's a pretty lofty goal. Yeah, I know. I'm working hard for it. And guys aren't the only ones with big dreams. Shanice Aracena is one of 60 trend-setting females who attend Auto High. There's not many females in the automotive industry, so... After four years, Aracena's learned the basics of her craft and how to handle the constant ribbing by her male counterparts. Some guys in the class are like, I bet you she knows more about cars than you do. Recruiting females is a never-ending challenge for Silberman, who often finds herself defending the relevance of her school to educators and administrators. Being an auto technician um, now, more than ever before, is no longer a self-taught field. Raising and educating future technicians and elevating a school like this is essential. As far as Silberman's concerned, the doors of Automotive High will remain open as long as there's a car that needs to be repaired and students who want to immerse themselves in an industry that can lead to a promising future. This school embodies the American dream. If you work hard, you can learn to do a skill with your hands and your head and your heart, and you can be somebody in the world. It's become an all too familiar sight on the road these days, distracted drivers exchanging electronic messages while operating a vehicle. I see texting more often nowadays. 17-year-old Joseph Biondo says he knows tech 